Today, we're finally gonna start working on the Solid International again, and more specifically, we're gonna take a look at the brakes. This Solid International has both front and rear drum brakes, which are actuated by a vacuum-powered remote brake booster. Some of those parts I can keep, but some of them I'll need to find modern replacements for. Before I get to the brakes though, I'll have to remove these old Dayton Widowmaker rims. I would like to find one piece rims for it someday so that I don't have to run bias by tires, but that's a bridge I'll cross when I come to it. Unfortunately, most of the major brake components in this truck have been frozen solid since before I bought it, and they're not really salvageable. There are some replacements available, but they're very expensive, and to be honest, this truck probably didn't have the best brakes to begin with, so we're going to improve on the old system. So coming underneath the truck for the moment, this is the uh, master brake cylinder. You can see uh, that there's no booster on the front of it. This style of booster has a remote booster, uh, which is actually behind us, and I'll show you that in a moment. But this master cylinder is pretty well toasted. It's never had any fluid except for maybe water in it for as long as I've owned it. Uh, so I'm not really looking to run it. They're not all that expensive to replace, but I think I'm going to go with a different system anyway, and I'll show you what I mean in a moment. So turning away from our uh, master cylinder for a moment, and we'll look to the other side of the truck. And that circular looking object there, that's actually our remote booster. So if we take a look at this booster, it looks a little bit like a typical booster you'd see in the front of a master cylinder, um, but it's got a few more lines coming off it. I'm not 100% certain how these work. Uh, this one has two vacuum lines going to the intake, um, but in essence, it's just around an 11, 11 and a half inch single diaphragm booster. Um, but I think we can do better for our new brakes. Plus, to repair these is really expensive, and for the braking power you get, it just doesn't really make sense. So the obvious solution to my problem is just to purchase a new master cylinder or booster combo that you would see in a newer truck and mount it on the firewall somewhere in there under that tarp. Um, however, obviously I don't have my engine and transmission in right now. There's still some border issues going on preventing me from picking it up and placing it in. Um, so because I don't have it in, I don't know where things are going to go permanently, I'm not sure which one is going to fit. So at least for the uh, brake booster and master cylinder, I'm going to have to wait before I touch those. But in the meantime, I can do the wheel cylinders and take a look at the brakes. Cameras don't always do a great job when it comes to object scaling, um, but these tires are pretty large. Uh, when they're in the dually configuration like this, I'd say they actually weigh quite a bit more than I do. Um, so it will be a bit of a hassle to get them off, but I'm hoping that today I can get these uh, brakes and the drums off behind it, and then we can get a look at those wheel cylinders and hopefully replace them. First, we've got to get through this so I can actually get my socket on there. I actually feel kind of bad getting rid of this old grease and oil, because it usually does a really good job preserving what's underneath of it. But right now, anyway, it's going to come on. <laughs> Gotta say, thank God for these cordless impacts. So those all came off really easily. Um, every nut came out no problem, except for one which did pull um, the stud out with it. That's fine. On the other side, I think like three or four of them come out, so I'm definitely happy with only having one come out. Now you may have noticed when I was uh, digging the old goop off there with the screwdrivers that uh, I, two little holes have popped up, and what these are for is uh, you can throw a bolt like this into them, and then it will uh, pop the axle or the axle shaft out a little bit, and then you can take that whole thing out in one piece. So. Let's see how easily this guy decides to come up for us. Usually these aren't too bad, as long as the uh, shaft is well lubricated. You don't usually have too much in the way of problems. Yep, it's already starting to come out a little bit. Oh. 
that oil obviously doesn't look new, but it's still definitely oily. You know, there doesn't seem to be any water in that. Um, I'm definitely happy with the condition it's in. This half shaft, or axle shaft, sure, it should be in good condition here. I don't see any rust or anything on that. Perfect, I'm gonna go toss this in the garage. Now that I've got that axle out of there, you can see an axle nut. Behind that axle nut, you can probably see just the tabs of a keeper, and there's one more nut behind that, and that's all in front of the bearings. Now, if you look to the top right-hand side, you can see that this nut has definitely been off before, because somebody has beaten it, both to take it off and to put it back on. Now, if you have the proper size, um, uh, socket for this that's great, but that's it would have to be very thin walled as you can see right there You can buy them. You know, they are available um, I'm probably not going to worry about it at least for taking it off this axle um, Nut has already been Chewed up a little bit. I'm not really worried about adding to that um, So yeah, we'll take those guys off and then becomes the hardest part sorry then starts the hardest part which is uh, removing these actual tires and rims themselves This top ear here, I didn't notice that was leaned over. He did not want to bend back, so the bending back, he just sort of broke to pieces. That's all right. In behind him, you can only sort of just see him there. One more nut. And he is going to come out the exact same way. And there it is. All that's left in there now is the bearing. Now that the axle nut and bearing are taken off, we can get on to doing the really difficult part, which is removing this whole tire. Uh, now, what I would like to be able to do is to come back here. And if you see that little hole right in the center of the camera there, um, that's where you tighten or loosen the shoes on this brakes, or sorry, on these brakes. And I would like to be able to loosen them all the way up so there's no drag and no resistance coming from them as I pull this tire up. Uh, unfortunately, both of the adjusters are seized and I have been letting them sit in oil for uh, about two weeks and uh, just no luck. So they're seized on there and I'm just going to have to try and force this off and hope that I can overcome uh, any little bit of brake drag that might be left. Oh, she's coming. Oh yeah. I forgot, she's coming. That only took about 15 minutes of beating this time, which is nice uh, because the last one took me about two days. Whew. That's really good. It's not all the way off yet, but I've cleared the brakes. You know, that's kind of the lion's share. I'll bring you in a little bit. You can see there the brake pads, and they're pretty big. By my standards, anyway. So, 
now I just gotta beat that the rest of the way off there. And we can take a look at those wheel cylinders. I gotta wheel this where you are, so I'll shut you off and bring you back when we can take a look. Well, here it is. This is what I've been struggling to see, and uh, yep, it looks more or less how I'd expect it to look. I'm uh, not too sure what that guy is yet. Poked in with a screwdriver later. Uh, but in the meantime, yeah, this all looks fine. Everything looks like it's there. I'm not seeing any broken springs or other damaged hardware yet. But what I will do is give this a quick spray down with brake parts cleaner and uh, a little wipe down as well because some of this, these old brake pads uh, can contain asbestos and you really don't wanna be breathing that in. So I'm gonna give that a quick spray and wipe down and then we'll get a better look at those pads and see if I'm gonna be able to run with them or if I'm gonna have to order new ones right off the hop. I'm not seeing any big chunks taken out anyway. That's good. Guys like spiders? Whoa. That might have been a wasp nest maybe at one time. First I thought mouse house. But nope. Alright, well that looks a little bit better anyway. Let's get it out of there. At least now we'll be able to see what we're working with. All right, well, first off, let's take a look at these upper pads. There's definitely some wear on those pads, or shoes, I guess I should be calling them. Same with these bottom ones. But, uh, you know, there's a bit of life there, you left. Know, anyway, I'm not gonna hit on the, step on the brakes and not have braking force. Um, so I haven't actually, which is good, because I haven't been able to source a set of, um, of shoes for this yet. So if you do happen to have shoes, and I think these are four and a half inches maybe. If you do happen to have a set of shoes, or you know of a spot where I can buy a set of shoes, do let me know and I will buy shoes for it. Um, but in the meantime, I'm going to run with these ones. I've already looked at the shoes on the other side. They're fine. There's actually more meat on those ones than there are on these ones. Um, but what I am going to replace, even without testing them, are these master cylinders. And uh, there's two, or not master cylinders, I'm sorry, um, wheel cylinders. And there's two on this truck. There's one right here, and there's another one here. So two over at each side of the axle. And uh, luckily, I happen to already have those ones on me. So I was really surprised when I went online, was actually able to find new wheel cylinders for this truck, brand new. Um, and the only reason that's possible really is because International uh, used to buy a lot of their parts from their competitors. Um, so these were found on uh, Fords. And although that's not the original product number, it's just an updated product number. Um, I've already put them in on the other side but a week ago, so I do know for a fact that will fit on there. Um, and as far as I can see, it's a direct replacement. So if you have an International R180, that is the number you need, probably, anyway, for your brake cylinders. Assuming you don't have the air brake version of this truck, of course. So the only thing I really need to replace in here, at least to get it yard drivable right now, are just these, uh, just these wheel cylinders. There. And there. But before I can get them off, 
I need their adjusters, which are right there on this guy, and actually right over here on this guy, um, to be able to take these brake pads and pull them away from the wheel centers a little bit. So after I uh, unattach from the back, I can just pull them out. Now, I don't give this great odds of working. This guy here might come back around. I've already given him a little squirt of oil. Um, and I've done the same thing to this guy over here, but uh, these uh, adjusters face opposite directions of each other. So if we look at the top of this guy, it's a little bit hard for you to see that, but that's actually a hull, or it should be a hull, but it's not because it's filled with brake dust and grime and, you know, 60 years of God knows what. Whereas on this guy over here, the hole is actually underneath them on this side because he's flipped upside down. And so that hole is empty and this one might come back around. Uh, this guy, I'd say we're probably going to have to fan dangle that wheel cylinder out of there first and then dig all that goop out of there and then try and free him up because that's where his screw goes. But uh, we'll see how that goes for us. So I let this soak a little bit longer in a penetrating oil and I can hardly believe this, but I can actually manually turn this one. Oh, I just, oh, had to replace that, but that's fine. I can actually turn that. So yeah, there's a stroke of luck. I'm gonna have to figure out which way um, adjust it outward and then that master cylinder should come off, no problem. So that's freed up really nicely now. You can see if I push on the end of this guy, there's no more weight on him at all. So this whole, uh, this whole cylinder should pop out of there really easily. Before we do that, we should take a look at the back. So because we have two uh, cylinders, two wheel cylinders on this machine, sorry, we have one line which brings the brake fluid in, fills up that cylinder, and then another line which leaves it, and that's the upper line, which circles around and goes into the bottom of that next wheel cylinder uh, and then that one's capped off with a bleeder valve. So that's how these sort of dual setup works. Um, I don't see a whole lot of these. I don't work on trucks of this size really hardly at all. But there you go. And there's where it uh, divides off and goes over to the other side. So I'm going to have to make up these new lines, obviously, um, before I uh, put this back together. I'm not even going to try and save these. I'm actually just going to cut each line so that I can put a socket on it and pull it off and make it that much easier. And then, yeah, you know, once I get my master cylinder in, we'll worry about running all new brake lines at that time. There you go, easy as that. That's where he came out of. Let's see, this guy's left behind. There. Oh, that is one wheel cylinder removed. So uh, this guy might be a little bit harder to beat up since I wasn't able to uh, get the adjuster unfrozen. We'll see how he goes. Now if we take a look, you can see what I mean about that uh, about that hole. So this is where the screw will come up for the adjuster. Um, and it's just packed in there solid. Maybe we'll just grab a little, yeah, oh, I like this guy here. Yeah, you can see that coming out of there. What I'm gonna do is I will clear all of this out and I will throw a little bit of uh, penetrating oil down there and maybe we'll get lucky and it'll sink in enough to where we can get that guy freed up. Um, so while we wait for that to free up, we'll go inside and get those new, uh, new wheel cylinders prepared. 
Well, I'd say that we'd come inside and take a look at these uh, brake cylinders here. However, I actually said that about a year ago. It turns out uh, while I was filming this, apparently at some point I either lost or misplaced a whole bunch of footage. Um, and so I never ended up releasing this video about a year ago when I made it. I am going to uh, release it now. I'm just going to show real quick since I said I would. Um, these cylinders, you can see they're pretty badly rusted. There's actually still spider webs on them. Um, they are completely pooched, but there is a picture of the pattern on the bottom of them there. Just in case you happen to get a similar one. And they are the same on both sides. And you can see also where there were brake lines there, so I cut those off. Um, so there's currently no brake lines on the truck, except for a few sort of odds and ends hanging around in the frame rails. Um, and actually what I'll do real quick is I'll step by this mess of Argo and truck parts outside and I'll show you um, kind of what we've done to the truck a little bit. Um, and then we get a little sneak peek of what's coming up next. So this is our back axle, the way it sits right now. See that this bag I had covering is kind of tore open. Um, there's our new cylinder, which <laughs> because that bag tore open has developed quite a bit of surface rust over the winter time. Um, but I'm not too worried about that. Another fella, there he is down there. Um, I also freed up, I believe at one point or another, both those adjusters were actually freed up on this truck. Um, I think so anyway, one might have been seized on one side, but I'm not too worried about it. I'm going to start spraying them down soon. Um, I don't know if they'll come around or not. Uh, but unfortunately, I know this is kind of an abrupt end. Like I said, this was filmed like about a year ago. Uh, it's 2022 now. This was filmed around this time in 2021. So that side is done. That side is done. That, that bag actually held up. Um, and I also did, not that front guy, come around here. This front tire, just under the tarp. You can see them there. He's also finished. And that kind of brings us to our surprise. We've got a second tarp added on now. And that is because, either in the next video or the one after. Ooh, can't look at that too closely. So I'm, uh, I'm really behind on editing. Um, so thank you for uh, watching this one. Again, I apologize it sort of had such an abrupt end. Um, nothing really else has been done with the brakes other than the master cylinder has been removed. Um, so yeah, we'll catch you up a little bit in the next one. And then again, in the next video or two, kind of depending on how editing goes, uh, we're going to put that engine in. So thanks very much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.